uh, about 20 miles north of Madrid. It is very hot for round seven of the 1981 World Championship. But that is the danger man for all of them. Gilles Villeneuve, who won just two weeks ago in the turbocharged Ferrari at Monaco, an absolutely superb race. Gilles is right back on top of his form. The Ferrari is going well. But exceptionally well in practice has gone Mario Andretti there, the 1978 world champion, this year in a V12 Alfa Romeo. Pierre Jabouy the second of the Talbot drivers, now all ready for 80 laps around this difficult circuit. Watch for the green lights and watch the start. And Lafitte's dragging, Reutemann's got away extremely well, Jones has got away even better. There's Derek Daly coming through now, they come up to the first right-hander at Nouvellari, and it's Alan Jones and Reutemann leading Villeneuve with Alain Prost with them, and Jacques Lafitte is down, he's only in about ninth position at the first corner. It's Jones in the Williams, Reutemann, Villeneuve, Mario Andretti in fourth place, Alain Prost is fifth and John Watson is sixth. And they stream through this tight, difficult, demanding circuit. to catch his teammate Reutemann who's second behind him in the race with Villeneuve third as they complete the first lap. Mario Andretti in fourth place, Alain Prost in the yellow Renault in fifth position and Villeneuve is going to take Reutemann. Villeneuve right up to Reutemann and yes he's through, Gilles Villeneuve is through into second place on the second lap. So the Ferrari is now sandwiched between the two Williams. hot demanding conditions that they have today that is really sapping for the drivers. Villeneuve second, Reutemann third. And into the pits comes Eddie Cheever, Ken Tyrrell, his team manager and sponsor, leans over him and that's a Williams out of the running. And it's Alan Jones, Alan Jones the leader on lap 12, a Villeneuve goes through into the lead, Reutemann goes through now into second position, and this is sensational, I said a few moments ago that Alan Jones does not make mistakes and the Williams doesn't break down, there's Prost going through, there's Andretti and Watson and Lafitte going through, this is signalling to the marshals to push him, and if he has a push start and thereby has outside assistance and he's, his engine isn't running properly, he wants another push. And if he gets that push, and by the way, look at the stone sticking to his soft tyres. Well, he's got the push in the lead from Reutemann and there is the confirmation. The French Canadian and the Argentine driver. There's Villeneuve leading the Spanish Grand Prix. He's leading his second Grand Prix in two weeks. He now, Reutemann in second position and Villeneuve in front of him are catching Sturr. And if Sturr doesn't move over, here it is. This is where the lead could change if Villeneuve doesn't get his timing right, but it's a brilliant bit of move maneuvering and he's through. Now Reutemann's got to do the same thing or he'll lose time and distance. To the fact that he hasn't been Grand Prix racing all that long, he can resist the pressure. Just out onto the top straight at 150. And when they get to where the camera is... Now they're doing 175 miles an hour as they come down through the gears again into second gear at 11. It's Prost! Prost off! Alain Prost, the man who was in third position. Well, what a race this Spanish Grand Prix is turning out to be. That's where Prost went off, running across the course. Now you can see what a racing driver without his helmet looks like. Alain, he's going well now and past him. No, there's Daly, and, and Villeneuve is past him. That's Siegfried Stur on the left, the Italian. And Reutemann and Villeneuve are passing Stur. 
and Daly, and in the process, John Watson closed up on them both. It's number 14 in the end sign, and he lets Villeneuve through, and the positions at the end of 39 laps in this 80-lap race, Villeneuve, Reutemann, Watson, Lafitte, Piquet, De Angelis. 80-lap race, are we looking at the first two, Villeneuve in the Ferrari, Reutemann in second are looking at the first two? Place. And Alan Jones, lap five, fastest lap so far, some consolation to him, one minute 17.8, and that is 2.4 seconds slower than his own lap record, and confirms that the cars without the ground effect skirts this year are definitely going a lot slower, not surprisingly, than they did last year. And the gap now between Villeneuve in the lead and Jack Lafitte in third position is only just a whisker under eight seconds. Out of the race, that caption is at least a lap out of date. The significant thing about this race is that Villeneuve is driving an absolutely masterly race. His car, you may think, is the fastest on the course because of the fact that he's leading. That, in fact, is not so around the lap. He was way down in the practice times. He was only, if my memory serves me right, seventh fastest. But because it is so difficult to pass, if Villeneuve keeps his line right and uses the superior power of his 550 horsepower Ferrari engine on the straights to pull away a bit from Reutemann, there is no way that Reutemann's going to get past him as long as Villeneuve does not have trouble. Challenging Carlos Reutemann, and there's the difference, 3.8 seconds. That's the gap between Villeneuve, the leader, and Jack Lafitte in third position. you how well Gilles Villeneuve is driving. He has been resisting pressure right from lap 13 when he went into the lead after Alan Jones went off. He's been resisting the most terrific pressure from Carlos Reutemann and now his skill and determination is really going to be tested. That was the position on lap 59. Villeneuve, Reutemann, Lafitte, Watson fourth, De Angelis fifth, and Nigel Mansell, the young English driver, in only his eighth Grand Prix, in a very meritorious sixth position. Now there could be a change, because once again, Elicio Salazar, so new, and Reutemann's trying to take Villeneuve as they come up to, and he fails. Villeneuve either puts his foot down a bit further, or because he's got the line, obliges Reutemann to drop back, but Carlos is challenging very hard now. He desperately wants to get Villeneuve past Villeneuve, and Lafitte is right with Reutemann, and all three of them are bearing down on Salazar, and if Salazar doesn't move over, we could get a change of place. And, Villene and Lafitte is coming up to take Reutemann, or trying to. He's very close indeed, and he's through. Jacques Lafitte is through into second position, It's absolutely, and Watson, there is Watson. This is incredible because Villeneuve has not been able to get past Salazar. Tunnel bend in the minute they come and look at John Watson. He looks as though he's going to the pits, but he doesn't. He surges past Reutemann. Uh, an incredible passing maneuver. I thought he was going into the pits at colossal speed. As this and the feet going through on the inside as they come up towards tunnel but well this is incredible Elio De Angelis there is look at the gap on the right is increasing his world championship lead over Alan Jones by three points even though he's in fourth position and there is De Angelis it's not the first, second, third and fourth cars that we're looking at. Italian Bruno Giacomelli who is in 10th position. That's 66 laps completed. We're beyond that now. And the gap between first and fourth is 1.5 seconds. Turns.
And this could be Lafitte chance. He's been he's closer now to Villeneuve than he's ever been. He's got his front wing right under the gearbox of Villeneuve's Ferrari. And he's coming out of his slipstream to take him as they come down to Nuvolari with Watson right up behind them. All of them closing up on Giacomelli. Watson trying to take Lafitte. Lafitte trying to take Villeneuve. Two, because although he's in tenth position, the five behind him, who of course are harrying each other, slowing each other up all the time, getting in each other's way. I would hesitate to make any prophecies when that caption was done. That was 70 laps. It's an 80 lap race. We're beyond that now. Second to his then teammate Jody Schechter in the championship in 1979 and Lafitte challenging. But as I have said before, unless Villeneuve has trouble, as they and left, this is where Lafitte's going to try again. He's right up with Reutemann and De Angelis with Villeneuve, and De Angelis is right up with Reutemann. De Angelis trying to take Reutemann first to the right, then to the left. away from the Spanish Grand Prix but they have missed a magnificent race that's the position of 77 laps Mansell 26 seconds behind the leader in sixth place but between the first and fifth and we're looking at them now a mere one and a half seconds There's the positions, confirming that Mansell is 26.7 seconds behind. Closing up on Rosberg in the white car, Villeneuve, and he's passed. Rosberg has moved over and let them pass. So, this is coming up to the end of lap 79 and into the last lap they go. This is Lafitte's chance. If he doesn't do it now, he'll never get through. Down the far straight, 175 miles an hour, down through the gears, into Nuvolari. It's Villeneuve, Lafitte, Watson, Reutemann, De Angelis, virtually together. From Nuvolari to Fangio, which is where they are now. Then on to Varzi, then into the left-hander at Le Mans. First gear, up to Picasso, fourth gear. Now 135 miles an hour up to Ascari. They've got less than half a lap to go, and Villeneuve leads. Russell in sixth position. Down through the S's, into Bugatti. First gear, now up into second, third. Fourth gear, stay in fourth, and Lafitte is going to try and take him on the last corner but one. Now it's, it's, Lafitte is right up alongside him, he's into the last corner. Now he lines it up, Villeneuve lines it up, gets his foot down. And Gilles Villeneuve wins a fantastic drive, resisting pressure all the way. One of the finest drives I have ever seen in Grand Prix racing. And the 1981 Spanish Grand Prix has been won by the man who won Monaco two weeks ago. Gilles Villeneuve in the Ferrari wonderful finish again with Jacques Lafitte right behind just a car's length from victory but Villeneuve holds on over the line to win he's only four points behind him and the, 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 the smile of victory from Gilles Villeneuve his second win in two weeks as he takes the cup from King Juan Carlos the champagne John Watson, a delighted John Watson.